Last month I made a pact with myself to continue with frequent open top travel this side of freezing point, but the comfortable threshold turns out to be 6-7 degsy. Still, the hood, erected, isn't noisy and never leaks or flaps. It doesn't even let in much outside noise. It just acts like a coupe roof with extra versatility. The arrival of autumn is a reminder of how cold cabrios can get when the weather turns. I've been finding this out in the Audi S5, and discovering at the same time the usefulness of the rear windbreak, which I was previously rude about. With it in place, you can cope in cold weather with the top down, so I like it now. Wish it looked better, though. Healing the S5 Cabriolet's Battle Scars, September 20, 2017. The Audi came into sharp contact with a deer a couple of weeks ago as you might have heard. Killed the animal, sadly, and mangled the S5's frontal plastics, but at least the airbags didn't go off. Audi's phone recovery service was prompt and immaculate, the car was collected within couple of hours and now its repair is largely complete. We're looking forward to its return. It has taken a while, but I've finally got to grips with the configurable driving controls essential to full enjoyment of any Audi S5 and especially the cabrio, which is unusually satisfying at both extremes of its performance. Often in the cabrio, in the same half day, you'll first need to cruise a motorway, top up to cut wind rush and other people's tire noise while the engine pulls fuel saving low revs in 8th gear. If you're lucky, your journey will take you to a place where you can glide quietly along country roads with the top down, enjoying rural sights smells and vistas before maybe finishing the day with a sprint on favorite roads, for which you need full access to the 3.0 liter turbo V6 S349 bhp, via a transmission now configured so that it both sharpens throttle responses and isn't nearly as keen on finding 8th gear for delivering maximum economy. The transmission part is easy, pull the lever backwards and you'll get sport which will either let you change manually on the shift paddles or give you an auto regime that ensures that the engine is nearly always operating between maximum torque and maximum power, with the smooth bark from the S5's impressively purposeful quad exhaust curling up to your ears across the car's rear deck. But it's how you use the drive select control, awkwardly located a stretch away on a little panel just above the center console, that makes an even bigger difference. Press it and you'll be offered a chance to select comfort, auto, or dynamic settings for the engine and gearbox, the suspension, magnetic shocks, the electric power steering, the rear diff, which tames wheel spin and dispenses torque vectoring, and the engine sound. You'll soon tire of changing these settings all the time, especially since the switch stays live for only 4 seconds, which is